and, and insight uh, as it pertains to the 4th of July. But you know what I, what I found myself experiencing? I found myself experiencing the Holy Spirit guiding me in the, in the Word. I'm, I'm opening the pages, I'm reading. And I was doing this, Lord, what, what, what can I share that would really help people understand this? And I felt the Lord put in my heart, share my word, share my word, share my word, share my word. And I was like, I know I want to share your word, Lord, but, you know, it, it's got to somehow, you know, really uh, kind of single out or, or uh, you know, kind of sh shine the spotlight on this freedom we have and, and in honor for the July. And I felt like God just put it in my heart. When people receive my word and they let the word get rooted in their hearts, they are free. And they live free. And if they live free, their example and influence will spread upon those who are lost and who do not know the Lord yet. And so they will become free. The righteousness of our country the freedom that we have, it's been said, really does start in the pulpits of America. It starts in the pulpits. Because when the pulpits of America are preaching the truth, preaching the word of God, then America changes. When the pulpits of America, when you hear the preaching of humanism and secularism and meism and selfieism, <laughs> is there such a thing as a selfieism? <laughs> I don't know if there it was, but there is now, because I just said it. When the pulpit is preaching, over the pulpit is being preached, these things, then you'll see the fruit of that in our nation. And so I thought about share with me once again. Share my word, because my word will get in there, and it will produce righteousness. And righteousness, the Bible says, exalts a nation. Not good politicians, not slick willy you know, politicians. Righteousness exalts the nation. And it starts in the pulpits of America. So, amen. With that, Matthew chapter 13, I want to minister to you uh, out, of the, uh, out of this parable, the first parable that Jesus began to speak about when he started ministering in parables. I want to take one portion of this parable today and share it with you. The title of my message this morning is called The Danger of a Hardened Heart. The Danger of a Hardened Heart. And my subtitle of this is Can Christians Can Christians heart get hard? That's the subtitle. So the danger of a hardened heart and the question, can Christians have hardened hearts? Can you be a believer with a hardened heart? Or may I say, may I ask the question a little bit differently? Can a Christian, uh, can a Christian's heart begin to change and get hard? Because here's the reality. When a believe, when somebody becomes a believer, then that's that's a an indication that their heart is tender, open, and willing to receive this, the salvation, the free gift, and the love of God, and all of that. That's an indication that God has done, has done something to your heart so you can receive salvation. But what about as we serve the Lord, and as we're serving God, what about then, on a regular basis, can a Christian's heart become a heart? Can a Christian's heart gradually become stony? Can it gradually become callous? Can it gradually become so hard that even the word doesn't penetrate it completely? Is it possible? And I'm here to tell you this morning, from what I see in the word of God, I believe it is. I believe the Word of God teaches us how to live for God for this very reason. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts, for out of it comes the wellspring of life. The, guard, the, the, Lord, the Word of God tells us to guard our hearts, to protect our hearts, to recognize that it's the center of our soul, that place where you and I, our relationship with the Lord begins, and, and, and so we must protect that place in our life, in our walk. 
Those instructions would not be there if it wasn't possible for our heart to get corrupted, hardened, and, and any other words you can think of. Those warnings wouldn't be there. Those guidances, those directions. So, let's go there. Matthew chapter 13. Uh, <clears throat> verse 1 says, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And a great multitude were gathered together to him. So then he got into a boat and sat, and he sat down, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables. Let's stop there for a minute. When you look at the, the book of Mark, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what you find is there came a point where Jesus stopped speaking directly to everybody. There came a point where Jesus was speaking, he was speaking the kingdom's message, he was demonstrating with power and miracles, he was speaking truth, sayings of truth. Have you ever heard anybody say that the word of God has some very hard sayings in it? Mm -hmm. You ever heard that? Yeah. A couple of you? Two of you? Three of you, thank you. <clears throat> it, the reality is, uh, the Bible has a lot of things to say. God's Word, Jesus Himself, said things that were hard to hear because they were not easy, because they were difficult. And for some, we've been felt, as we read, and those who were listening to Him uh, directly as He walked up the earth, I thought of it as impossible. When He said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The one of the highest teachers in the land, they could even say, wait a minute, how can a guy, how can a person get back into his mother, mother's womb a second time to be born again? Jesus told them, you're, you're a teacher in Israel? You are one of the highest teachers in Israel? You don't understand spiritual things. See, there came a point where Jesus stopped speaking that way. And it is where we are beginning today. It was on that day when Jesus began to speak in parables that he began to speak in parables because the multitudes that would come to him, he knew that many were not receiving. So it made it possible as he spoke parables to everyone, he was able to take his believers, his disciples, off to the side later and explain the parables to them. Don't ask me why he did it. I don't know exactly why he did it. Only what the Bible reveals. The Bible reveals that he would speak the word. How many know the word is the word of truth? It is like seed. Right? It is like seed. And, and I find that interesting because what is the first parable Jesus speaks about? The first parable he starts out with is the sower and the seed. What, had, what, had, what had he been doing all this time? He'd been walking with his disciples, sowing the seed of the word of God, the word of truth, the gospel, the message of the kingdom. And that seed had been landing on all sorts of ground, right? And so it is no wonder he, when he starts his parables, he starts with the sword of the seed. So listen to him. Verse 2, a great multitude were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat, sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed some seed, fell on the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Verse 5, <clears throat> Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, Excuse me. I used a highlighter and it darkened all the words. I can barely read it. Uh, immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. I'm not going to share the whole parable today. There's just way too much. And you know me, guys, I'll, it will turn into a series in one service. <laughs> But this morning, I, I, I was drawn 
by the Holy Spirit to this one part of it. We know the seed is the word of God. We know the ground in the parable is the condition of the heart that where the seed went. We know this already. Uh, one thing we need to know, if you haven't figured this out by now, is you can choose what condition your ground is. I need to say that again because some people think, well, you know, it's I can't choose. I just I am what I am, and if the word of God hits me and doesn't go in deep, what can I do about it? No, that is not true. You can choose what kind of heart you have. The condition of your heart. There were four different types of conditions of the ground that the seed landed on. One was uh, <clears throat> was the wayside. That, that pathway that never had anything growing on it, people used it like a sidewalk. They, it was that hard, impenetrable, just uh, nothing could ever get in. And that's why the birds of the air, which represented Satan, would come and eat the seeds, take them away, and, uh, uh, you know, they would never have an opportunity, or excuse me, they had the opportunity, but they would never uh, receive the word of truth, and thus never change. Um, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret real quick before I go further. Um, part of my attraction to this message this morning is also that I've been doing a lot of yard work. And, and um, I found out in my backyard, I have some really nasty, nasty land. Some really bad land. Uh, I was do using a pickaxe for a while. I won't tell you how long. Uh, it was so long that by the time I was done, I walked into the house like this. <laughs> uh, so I asked uh, Jeremiah to help me with some of it, and by the time he was done, he walked into the house like this. <laughs> so I said to Jeremiah, now you know what, what this old guy feels. He goes, it must not be, he said, it must not be an old thing, it must be a work thing. And I said, you got it, buddy. It's a work thing. <laughs> I happened to be out there getting rid of some of that topsoil so I could do something with my with my yard because it really did look like the Amazon jungle for a while. And when I was getting at some parts, I literally thought I was trying to pickaxe cement. And I'm like, what is going on here? I can't get I can't get any further. It's just so hard. Nothing can break through. And little by little, I started to break it away and found out it wasn't cement. It was some sand on top of our clay dirt with a little water baked that way for a long, long time. And it got so hard that I, I, I started to think, what if I was? What if I started planting grass seeds first? I can't even get a pick in it. That seed's never going to make it. Never. And so I just had to let you in on that. It was it was like God was talking to me first. He's like, you see your backyard, Tony? Yeah, well, you let it get like that. And I was like, I did. So this is a message. Go home and mow your lawn. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like God said, you let it get like this. You see how hard it is for me? Once you let your heart get hard, how hard is it for me to get my truth in there? And then it started making me go, man, wait. I thought, I thought that sower and the seed thing was, was majority about unbelievers. But no, it can very well be the believer who do, does not take care and guard their heart and it gets harder and harder. And God gave me a revelation. I, I, every day I'm sowing. I'm always.